Okay, today we're going to talk about placing figures in the coordinate plane. This is section 6.6 .6 in our text. So we're going to learn to name coordinates of special figures by using their properties. And what this means is they give it a bunch of coordinates and um, all the math uh, quadrilateral properties that we've learned. You're going to be able to name the coordinates or name the uh, specific shape that is uh, shown by those coordinates. So this is going to entail a lot of probably trivial calculations, but um, we'll be able to do it. So we want you to be able to concentrate on the ability to determine coordinates of various types of quadrilaterals, okay? So these coordinates may not be exact numerical values, and they will in this section be variables. So we're going to allow quadrilaterals of any size and uh, to be shown with a given coordinate set of rules, if you will. Um, and you'll see what we are talking about with this. And this is going to allow us to see the general relationships between side lengths and also the types of quadrilaterals that are presented. Now, these thought processes are going to apply to figures of any shape placed in the coordinate plane, whether they're quadrilaterals or triangles or any sort of polygon or anything like that. So we're essentially creating formulas to govern where certain points should be in relation to each other for a given shape. Okay? Now, um, these formulas may not apply for every situation, like they may be based on, you know, one vertex being at the origin or one vertex being at a certain point, but um, you're going to be able to see certain patterns uh, associated with the different shapes that we've learned about. So, here's an example. We have a square. We want to figure out the coordinates for a square whose center is at the origin. Okay, so here is the origin. That's at zero, zero. We want any square to be represented by this. So we'll have a certain distance away, right, on each side. I've drawn this as four, but it could really be anything, okay, which means that I've got to have that distance be the same away from, oh, this is where I really, eh. this is where I really get frustrated with my ability to work on this because it doesn't really show me what I need. Oh, oh, shoot, there we go again. Okay. So if I draw this square, now I want this to be a square of any size. What this means is I have a certain distance away. We'll call this A. Oh, that doesn't look like I want it to. A. A. And A, right? For this bottom one as well. Okay? So that's going to put this point here at a, A, right? This point here will be at negative A, comma, positive A. This point here will be at negative A, negative A, right? And this point here will be at positive A, negative A. So you see what we've done is it doesn't matter how big our square is. Okay, these side lengths here have a length of 2a, right? And they're congruent to each other. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. And you may come up with a different answer than somebody else. So, um, but that doesn't make it any less right. You'll just kind of have to reason through it, and, and um, we'll reason through your answers together if you don't think or you think that you're having problems with it. Because there could be other ways to do this, right? I could have asked you coordinates for a square whose vertex is at the origin, right? That would have been an entirely different problem, even though it's a, still a square. Okay? Now, if we wanted to find the coordinates 
uh, I'm taking this a little bit in a different direction than I had originally planned, but if I wanted to find the coordinates for a specific square who's with a specific side length, say I wanted to find a side length of of 8, right? That means a would have to equal 4. But if my side length of 12, then a would equal 6, okay? So you can take this in a bunch of different directions once you've got your relationships um, between the points worked out. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Here's another example. We want you to draw a vertical kite inside a rectangle. And the rectangle has its bottom left vertex located at the origin, uh, such that the distance from the top vertex of the kite to the intersection of the diagonals is one-third the distance of the vertical diagonal. Okay, so... I'm going to draw a rectangle and I want a kite inscribed and we want the distance of the top vertex of the kite to its intersection is one-third the distance this. So this distance here is one-third the length of the vertical diagonal. Okay? So that gives me diagonals of my kites that look something like this. Okay? Now I have not governed anything else. Okay? So, that's all I've governed, is this distance in relation to the total height of the rectangle, right? So if my height of my rectangle is then x, right? Then I've got really about eight points that I need to deal with. I need to deal with the four points of my a rectangle, and I need to deal with the four points of my kite. Okay? So we'll color coordinate these. Basic information will still be in uh, black. So I've named this x and one third x, right? And now I need to name something that tells me width, okay? So width, let's call that A again. Why not? So this whole width is A. This whole height is X, which makes this point, of course, 0, 0. This is the point 0, A. This is the point A comma X. And this is the point um, this is the point a comma zero, this is the point zero comma a, right? Those I should have written in red. Let's write these other ones in blue. Now we know that um well, one thing that I wish they would have brought up with kites um, in the last section is the fact that um, the vertical does bisect, the vertical diagonal does bisect the horizontal diagonal. One diagonal does bisect the other. Okay, and so we've got that to deal with because that makes this a whole lot easier because now we know this is the distance a over 2 comma 0. This is the distance a over 2 comma x. This is 0 comma 
2 thirds x. And this is the distance a comma 2 thirds x. That doesn't look very good. Let me rewrite that. And how do I know that? Well, we wanted this distance to be one-third x, which means this distance here has to be the remaining two-thirds of that x value. Okay, So now we've established the proportions that these figures need to take. Okay, Now you're asking, why on earth are we learning this? Oh my goodness. Think about it. Um, if you are trying to establish relationships between points, with certain constraints. And you need to do this for graphics of any reasons, or, or you're looking to program um, that into a computer of some sort. Um, this is one way that you can learn how to give coordinates dimensions without regard to what size they may be. So you could dilate this to any uh, size, but it still keeps the relationships between the points the same, if that makes sense. Okay, so we've established constraints um, that govern with this, they govern the relationship of the uh, vertical diagonal of that kite. Okay, how far um, that horizontal diagonal is going to be in relationship to the uh, total height of the, um, how far up that horizontal diagonal is going to be in relationship to the total height of the kite. Now, notice we did not do anything side to side. We just constrained it top to bottom. So we could still have a really wide kite or a really wide um, rectangle. But that is just one example of how we could name those coordinates. Okay. Um, Example two in your text does a really good job of giving you um, coordinates that require you to do midpoint and slope on the coordinates in order to get the final coordinates. So look through example two quite thoroughly um, in your text because it's going to provide a lot of information for you. Okay, read through examples one and two. Example one was nice because it um, is a rectangle and it also has a check understanding that covers a parallelogram. Um, so make sure you can work through that. Uh, there's also uh, several problems on the test that cover this section. So study this section quite thoroughly. Make sure to do all the book work for this section. What we've learned, coordinates don't just have to be numbers. We can use relation or variables to help them to describe them. And this helps describe the relationships of the points with respect to other points like the origin. Okay, So um, each problem is going to be different. And your variables that you use may not be the same as anybody else's, but uh, they might be somewhat similar. And it's just a great way to show um, uh, how do I say this? Great way to show formulas for things. It's also a good way to build proofs. Okay, and that's what we're going to use it for in the next section is to build proofs to show um, that different figures would have to be congruent or um, to show um, what the relationships between those things, what between different parts of quadrilaterals would have to be to make them um, different shapes. So hopefully that helps you guys a little bit. It's kind of um, a crazy section because there's not a lot of numbers and you're saying what are we doing with all these letters and how do I know I'm right? That kind of thing. Work through it slowly, methodically, make sure you completely understand it and of course we'll uh, get you lots of help in class too. Okay.